Today, we're taking a look at the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter f2.8 lens in the first of a three part series. In this video, we'll look at the design and build quality, drawing a few comparisons to the Sony 16 to 35 f4. So, let's get into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Scott, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you for watching. Please do consider subscribing for more no-nonsense tutorials and reviews. All right, so like I said, in this video, we'll be looking at the design and the build quality, and I'll also have two more videos coming soon. One of those is looking at the image quality as well as things like autofocus and just how much the optical stabilization in the Sony lens helps with uh, slow shutter speeds compared to the Tamron as well as for video use. And then the final video will be more of just a conclusion or a discussion kind of talking about which lens I personally will be choosing to use from now on and why. So for now, let's get into video one. So the first and most obvious thing comparing these two lenses is the build quality. I'm not saying that the Tamron is bad at all. It's pretty much all plastic though, while the Sony is all metal. You can see the slight size difference here as well. And the Sony does zoom out a bit, extend a bit when you zoom to 16 millimeters. Plus the Sony has a 72 millimeter filter thread versus just 67 millimeters on the Tamron. The front element on the Tamron does move in and out when you zoom, despite the lens itself not extending, but it never goes past the front of the lens barrel. A quick thing to note here too is that the Sony has these easy to see markings around the front element for things like focal length, minimum focus, uh, distance, and more. Importantly, maybe the filter thread size, which the Tamron has written underneath the lens down here in tiny little letters near the mount. It may not seem like a big deal, but when you're going between lenses in the field and trying to find filters or step up rings to fit your lens and you can't remember what size you need, it is helpful to have it written right there where it's easy to see. As for the weight, including the lens hoods, but with no lens caps, no rear caps, the Tamron comes in at just about 441 grams, while the Sony is a little bit heavier at 551 grams. Tamron has these rubberized focus and zoom rings with the focus ring being closer to the camera mount, while the Sony has metal rings for both uh, with the zoom ring being in back and the focus ring being closer to the front of the lens. Both the zoom rings and the focus rings do turn in the same direction on these lenses though with the wide end being on the right and the uh, longer end being on the left. The zoom ring for the Sony does have a little bit more resistance, I think, uh, than the Tamron, and just overall, the Tamron's zoom ring may be just a little bit smoother if I were to pick one or the other, but they are fairly similar in terms of weight and feel uh, besides the actual difference in the materials. Now the focus rings are both electronic and non-linear, meaning that the speed that you turn the rings off uh, affects how fast or how far the focus point moves. They're both Decently smooth with a light but reasonable amount of resistance, I think. Uh, but since the Tamron's ring is rubber and plastic, just like the rest of the lens, if you hold it too tight, it will flex just enough to rub against the inside of that barrel, and that really ruins the experience. With the outside of that ring being rubberized, you might think that you don't need to really grip it all that tight anyway, but it's not the grippiest rubber I've ever felt, uh, depending on how dry or how sweaty your hands might be. Um, but it is a little bit slippery when you're uh, doing this a little bit lightly. So the combination of that really makes the experience not the best in my opinion in terms of manual focus on this lens. On top of that, it may just be my imagination, but I feel like the way that the electronic focus uh, in the Sony responded was just a little bit more natural and easier to get accurate focus pulls uh, than with the Tamron. But again, just my, my humble opinion. Overall, if manual focus is important to you, like it often can be for video, even with cameras that do have amazing autofocus capabilities like these Sony cameras, um, then the Sony lens, I think, has to take the win in the manual focus category. Anyway, they both have metal rear mounts, of course, and the Tamron does have a rubber gasket in the back here, indicating some level of weather resistance, as well as their B-bar coating on the glass elements to help with ghosting and flare, uh, and a flurrying coating on the front element that that's water and oil repellent, making it easy to clean, which I do love. The Sony does not have that rubber gasket in the back, but it does claim to have a dust and moisture resistant design, as well as their Zeiss T-Star anti-reflective coating to help with flare. We'll see how they both do with that in the image quality video, of course. 
The Tamron has a nine bladed aperture uh, versus the seven bladed aperture on the Sony. And we will check out again, things like bokeh and little sun stars and things just a little bit in an image quality video. Obviously the minimum apertures for these lenses are also different. The Sony has a maximum of F4 and the Tamron of course goes all the way down to F2.8, which is a full stop difference. Now, again, crossing a little bit into the optical quality uh, category, but the Tamron has a minimum focus distance of 26 centimeters at the long end of the focal range and just 19 centimeters when you're on the wide end of that focal range. So that means you can get up to a one to 5.2 reproduction ratio for some interesting close up wide angle shots. The Sony lens can only focus down to 28 centimeters at either end of the focal range, making the maximum magnification of around one to 5.3, possible only at 35 millimeters. And on the wide end, you can't get nearly as close as with the Tamron. This varying minimum focus distance is something I've seen on a few other zoom lenses, and it's actually very, very useful. Now they both have these pedal shaped lens hoods and neither has any button for a locking type of design, but they do both snap on nice and securely, as you can hear there. And the lens caps, I don't know where my Sony lens cap went, but uh, the Tamron lens cap is this kind of deeper design, the one that you get with the nice deep pinches in it like you see on a lot of Tamron lenses. One of the best lens caps that is on the market, small detail, but it is useful uh, when you wanna reach in there and grab it, especially with the lens hood still attached. They both claim to have silent and accurate autofocus motors. And of course we will check out how accurate they are in the next video. But for now, let's take a quick listen to how quiet they are in both photo and video modes. Finally, in terms of design, the Sony has optical steady shot in the lens, but as you can see, there are no physical switches or buttons on the lens. The Tamron is also switch and button free, but it does not feature OSS and it will rely only on the sensor, sensor stabilization. We'll check out again, just how significant of a difference that makes uh, in the next video, both for photo and for video use. So to sum it all up from a purely objective standpoint, I think that the Sony probably wins uh, in terms of build quality with a metal housing and metal zoom and focus rings, but the Tamron wins in design with a barrel that does not extend when you zoom, has a rubber gasket on the back here, a varying minimum focus distance throughout the range, uh, and things like that fluorine coating on the front element that make it easier to clean. Of course, that's not all there is to these lenses, so be sure to check out the second video in the series, which will take a look at image quality, as well as things like autofocus focus and stabilization performance. And if you wanna know which of these I'm going to continue using and why, check out video number three. For now, if you have any questions or comments, let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you. Otherwise, if you found this video helpful, please do consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, sharing, all that good stuff, and I'll see you next time.